Welcome to Reach Out for Life. It is our goal to present a thoughtful and practical Christianity for today, which you can discover with your mind and live to the full with your life. And now the host of Reach Out for Life, Dr. Larry Bryce. Welcome to Reach Out for Life. We're so glad you tuned us in. If you're checking your groceries through the uh, grocery store and see all the tabloids uh, around the uh, counter, you'll know uh, just uh, some kind of idea of uh, what's happening in Hollywood with, uh, with uh, stars and uh, professional theater and cinema. Uh, what about Christian theater? Is there such a thing as Christian theater and Christian artists and Christian actors? Our guest today is Tom Carson. Uh, welcome, Tom, to the show today. Uh, Tom, uh, you have a background uh, in uh, fine arts from York University. Can you tell us a little bit about your training? Sure. Um, I, uh, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts from York University. Um, I uh, graduated from York in, in 1992. And um, I trained there as a director um, back when they, they had a program that, um, that was really a performance program uh, with, a, with kind of a directing focus. Uh, so I graduated from there and then started directing shows right out of school pretty much. Wow. Um, and, uh, and since then, I um, have been working as a producer and a director in all kinds of different environments in uh, Canadian professional theater. Why do you think professional theater is important for the church and people of faith, Tom? I think it's important because I think theater really more than, than the other arts is about enactment. It's, theater is about action. It's about doing. And that's why when, uh, you know, when I'm talking to young actors, I talk to them uh, primarily about what the word to act or the verb to act really is at its essence. Uh, to act is to do. It's not to pretend and it's not to uh, emote. Uh, it's to do. And so, and so that is at the heart of theater. Theater is about, uh, about making unseen things real and it's about enacting on your what I, what I call your make-believe. And so, and so what that means for people of faith, uh, particularly in Christian churches, um, and for church communities as well, is that theater is kind of a, a way of exploring what it means to act on your faith. And uh, sometimes that looks uh, different than it would look if you if you sort of planned it out, uh, just like life, how you, when you act on your impulse, you act on your beliefs, sometimes it looks, it looks different than, than you maybe would have thought it, it should. Um, but, uh, but works of art uh, that explore enactment are very close to, to what our, where our faith sort of arises out of. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think um, for church communities, having an event where where this is at the at the core where enacting is at the core of of an event uh, is is an important way to express into their community i think as christians what we have is the ability to not only just say stuff but but at the core of what we do is to genuinely believe and and it's it's a funny thing you know as as an artist we make we make believe. We we some people would call it pretend, or we imagine. Yeah. But the strength of that in our community is that it's like a little uh, a a little sort of model for the larger truth that we live every day. And sometimes it's really hard to see that truth in our everyday lives mm -hmm. or to experience. Uh, or, or kind of be able to view your life uh, just as you walk through it. But when, when we see a work of art that at its heart and soul is, is about enactment and really gets down into the, the sort of tough questions about life and faith, 
we're able to set aside our own personal ideas for a while and make believe with a work of art. Uh, Tom, um, make believe uh, is always contrasted with faith that's based on evidence in the Bible. But Jesus used make believe, didn't he, in the parables like the prodigal son or the uh, good Samaritan. Uh, he made fictional stories to illustrate the facts or the, uh, the beliefs that uh, are solid and true uh, and far beyond what is fantasy and make believe. Uh, it, it, theater uh, brings us into both those realms, doesn't it? Make believe and faith. The parables in the Bible are a fantastic example of, of make believe because they really set up a scenario that's different than the scenario that that Jesus was in and that his his quote unquote audience, the people he was speaking to, were in. And it set, it asks uh, us who read the Bible now and likely the people of the time to set aside their current reality for a moment and to engage with with a world and an idea and a story that really is about truth, but the only way into those, those truths and, the, and those ideas that are so profound is to set aside your own ideas for a while. And, um, you know, I'd, uh, likely you've, you've heard the quote, uh, the famous Coleridge uh, quote, which is uh, that poetic faith uh, requires a suspension of disbelief a willing suspension of disbelief. So it's almost like when you approach a piece, of, a piece of art, you approach it and you say, okay, these, are, these ideas are, are fictional and they're, they're, not, they're not my reality, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna set aside my skepticism for a while mm -hmm. and let this reality uh -huh. be true. Uh -huh. Just for a while, uh -huh. I'm gonna practice believing Okay. For a little while yeah. in this, yeah. and then I can take that back into my own life and my own reality. Yeah. So there's a functional, there's a, 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 a preaching or evangelism uh, aspect to Christian theater that it, it, if you can suspend disbelief for a while and enter belief, that can become very contagious and very convicting. Uh, I think so. We, we often... Um, you know, try and use theater to do something for us. Okay. Like, okay. we have a good sermon, uh, but it really would be a little more engaging if we had somebody doing something dramatic. So uh, we're going to use uh, that to sort of uh, prove our point. Uh, That's okay. Um, and, and many, many times that is effective. Yeah. What, we're, what we're trying to do is, is to move a, a little bit away from being completely message-driven just in text or in uh -huh. image. Uh -huh. And we're trying to get people to focus on the experience of, of art okay. as being fundamentally part of our Christian experience. Okay. So it's a little, uh, it is evangelism, absolutely. I think, I think as Christian artists, you know, we walk through our lives evangelizing constantly, uh, just just because we're witnesses and, and that's what we do. But I, think, but I think our artwork, we have a responsibility to fill it out so that it's not, it's not a sermon. Uh, it's, it, it perhaps um, is able to draw people in and draw people closer. But fundamentally, at its very core, we're most concerned with that act of make-believe and we're most concerned with allowing that to be as full as possible um, so that people, people can enter into that. You have a number of productions in the arts engine. Yeah. What, can you tell us something about them? I sure can. We, we develop a number of different projects that have uh, a different focus. We, we have a church touring program where we uh, create uh, professional productions that are able to tour into churches. And we do that so that churches can open their doors to their broader community and have an event that doesn't feel like 
a church event necessarily. It feels it feels like a like a, a professional theater event, and and we offer that entire sort of experience for churches. So really, their focus can be on opening their doors, inviting people out, and uh, get, gathering their community yeah. together. So so the shows that that we have currently. Uh, in our church touring program, and it's a national program. We, we, we okay. travel right across right the country. Across the country. Um, we have uh, been from Vancouver as far east as Ottawa, but we're hoping to go east uh, next season. You do productions. You have a very famous one around Christmas. Is yes. it 2,000 Candles? It's called 2,000 Candles, that's right. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about it? Yeah, 2,000 Candles started um, at a company called Brookstone performing arts, which used to work out of the Walmer Road Baptist Church. Uh, and a lot of those artists are currently involved still with me and with the Arts Engine. We were all involved together at Brookstone as well. Uh, 2000 Candles was created at Brookstone, and, and what the idea started as, um, let's, let's do a Christmas show that, that had some familiar carols and um, uh, you know, maybe done in a contemporary way, and let's get some some reflections on Christmas. Uh, that's really where we started with it. From that point, it really grew, because we realized. I mean, we were all uh, young Christian artists in the room at that time, and we, you know, our task was to create this show. We had just a couple of weeks to pull it all together, and we started. We started with the typical, okay, we're going to do Silent Night, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. we got to do the popular sort of Christmas song. Sure. And we have to, you know, we're going to do some Christmas poetry that people are familiar with. Yes, okay. Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, things oh. like that. Uh, so, okay. uh, and, and so, as, but as we, as we started speaking about Christmas, uh -huh. as we started reflecting personally about what our Christmases were actually like, uh -huh. it was what what started to arise was this strange combination of cultural Christmas, which has to do with Santa and elves and presents and trees and all that stuff, and what was at the heart of Christmas, which was the birth of Jesus, and what that could possibly mean uh, in our lives. And how did those things come together? Do they come together? Are we, you know, um, the malls and, 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 the, and the stores are filled with, with stories of Jesus' birth at Christmas time, but in, couched in such a commercial way and such a strange mix of, of truth and, and, and surface things and all these things are kind of in this crazy mishmash around <laughs> Christmas. And we started realizing this is a very complex and interesting time of year and, and an interesting idea. And so as we started exploring that, more and more personal material about what Christmas meant to us actually started to emerge. And so the show, uh, we call it a theatrical collage okay. because we can't really okay. think of another way to describe okay. it. It's songs, it's stories, it's poetry, oh. it's monologues that get at the heart of the experience of Christmas in our culture. And so, and that experience goes all the way from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer to the birth of Jesus Christ. And, and we, we deal with all of that okay. at the same time. Okay. And as Christians too, uh, at Christmas time, this is our, this is our opportunity. This is when we are welcome to express our story about Jesus. We are welcome in our culture to actually step forward. The message is out. So now what? What do we have to say about Christmas time? Okay. And so uh, that's what we do. Uh, the song, the, uh, the songs are 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 fantastic. I mean, they're beautiful Christmas carols. Uh, you know, from the the great tradition of Christian uh, music, and we we tweak them a bit. Um, you know, uh, to contemporize uh, the sound in some cases. In some cases, we just sing it straight up um, in four part beautiful harmony. Tom, uh, it sounds like your productions are the kind of thing you can inv invite your lost brother in law or your, your, your wayward kids to come and see 
and to have a thrilling performance in a church setting that hits on a number of different levels. It's a part entertainment. There's nothing wrong with good Christian entertainment. There's a huge need for good Christian entertainment, whether it's a concert or a play or a movie. And also it can hit on the faith level to build faith, to draw people closer to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that sounds like a terrific uh, scope that you have for your, your productions. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. We, we've been presented by churches in a number of different contexts. So the, the one that is most often uh, sort of the way that we're presented is a church will, will sort of pick a date and bring us into the sanctuary or into the hall and we'll, we'll do the show uh, one night. They'll invite their neighbors and their friends to come and experience the show. That's, that's one way. And, and what that does is it does open the church doors. It gets people in. And it's not, uh, uh, it's not an event that feels forced. It's not okay. an event that feels okay. like, well, what we really want to do is convert you. So, okay. uh, you okay. know, we're just going to pretend yeah. to have a play. Uh -huh. But really, we're, just, we're not interested in the play. We're just interested in something else. Okay. So it, it kind of, it, instead, it says, this is a valuable piece of art. You, you, I have two tickets. Do you, would you like to come? <laughs> and, and, it, and it is. Uh, That's it, great. It, and it is a, a work of art that, yeah. that, that is great. Um, and so there's that context. The other context that churches have used us um, is, is to rent the local theater mm -hmm. and, and say, and kind of just, just, remove the church building from it a little bit and say, this event celebrates our faith and celebrates our uh, idea of the world. And we're going to kind of put it out into the community and we're going to support it so, so that it feels, it feels a little more, uh, a little less like this is our, sh our show and our kind of community. It's more like this is, this is for everyone, and we're uh -huh. going to kind of put uh -huh. it out in the street a little. Good. Um, Good. And and we our shows look fantastic in a professional theater environment. Great. That's where that's where we come from. So okay. so our our artists and our technicians, uh, all our people are are theater people. So when we get into a professional theater setting or a church, you know we do it up so it looks awesome. Great. This these are these are folks who work regularly in. Uh, professional theater environments, but who are also looking for an opportunity to to work in in an environment that puts the spirit before the form. So so we enjoy when we work together. We enjoy being open about our faith. We enjoy uh, being open about what we would like to achieve through our work. We see our work as a fundamental act of worship. Amen. So, so we, that's what we do. Uh, we, yeah. we, we put that forward. Yeah. And when we include um, non-Christian actors, and non, because we, we hire uh, you know, the best person for the role, and sometimes oh. that's not a, you know, we don't just say we only work with Christians. Uh, what we do is we say, listen, we, you know, we, we worship through this. So this is what we do. This is our offering. Mm. So mm. we want to invite you to be part of that. Mm. We don't know. We don't know, uh, you know, often, often we think, oh, people are, people are not going to be comfortable with that or oh, they're not going to, oh. but, but uh, you know, our experiences are always fantastic yeah. when we invite uh, non-Christian artists into our environment because they're, they're just um, pleased that, the, that there's artists out there who have such a focus and wow, who are hey. so committed. Wow. One of the great, I mean, this doesn't come from a, an artist, it comes from a critic. One of the, one of the sort of most fantastic responses we got uh, from one of our shows, we did it at a, at a festival called the Word Festival, which celebrated this very fantastic festival in Toronto at uh, Soul Pepper Theatre Company. They had a festival that was called the Word, and it celebrated uh, Shakespeare and the King James Bible. Okay. And sort of their, their relationship and uh -huh. the language uh -huh. of the two. So we developed a show called The KJV. Okay. Which was, uh, you know, hold, holding up the, the tradition of the King James Bible, the King James Version, 
And, but we, we approached it in a completely different way than oh. other people were approaching it. We approached it as, uh, approached it as people of faith. Okay. So we started out okay. by saying, we actually believe this stuff. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so, so you guys are celebrating yeah. the words, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. we're kind of celebrating the word. Okay. And so, okay. yeah, this is a great version of the Bible. Yeah. But, but we're, we we're about it. something. Yeah, yeah, we actually yeah. buy into yeah. it. But, but the reaction from the critic after he saw the show, he, it was his favorite piece in the show, in the festival. And it, at the end of his, at the end of his um, review, he said, it's so refreshing and unique to see people believe in something. Wow, amen. Amen. And the and world wants to believe, they, Tom. And, and it's, so. it's, it's, it's a fabulous thing for, for, for someone who is used to seeing a lot of theater and uh -huh, kind of uh -huh. whatever to, to sort of amen. say, amen. what makes it special yeah. and what makes it unique and interesting as a work of art yeah. is that these people actually believe. Amen. Right? Isn't that great? <laughs> Tom, they can see on your website, www theartsengine.ca. They can see the productions you do, and there's an address there, a phone number, or an email address there's to get in touch with you for all a kinds of information in their, there. Yeah, in their place. That's right. God bless you, Tom. Thank you Important so much. Work the creative part of the Christian faith. You're on the cutting edge with the world and with the kingdom of God. Bless Thank you, you, Tom. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. God bless. Coming up, our address. So you can write to us for your own copy of the book offered today to help you grow in your faith. And now, back to our host, Dr. Larry Bryce. Tom Carson was our guest today. Tom knows the power to entertain and teach the gospel through drama. So did our Lord Jesus Christ. Through many parables, which are short fictional stories, Jesus taught sensitive truths about God, about ourselves, and about other people. Consider the parable of the Good Samaritan. This was a story to cross many forbidden barriers with his Jewish audience. It was, there was a question asked in Luke 10, 25 by a lawyer that test, was asked to test him. And it was a common question that many frequently asked in his very religious Jewish audience. Some questions were phrased this way. What is the most important commandment? And others, like the lawyer's question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? In this parable, Jesus gave very deep theology on the salvation that could never be achieved by good works, but by the grace of God alone. Jesus used this very dramatic story to teach very sensitive truths that he packed into the parable with meaning. This lawyer was from Israel's elite and was like the two first people who pasted the wounded man. It was a road going from Jerusalem to Jericho. And this man had taken that road that was very dangerous. There are many places where uh, robbers could hide and jump out and attack people. And this man was attacked. Everything was taken from him and he was left for dead. First, a Levite, an elite from the Jewish audience, like the lawyer, came by. Levites assist the temple priesthood in Jerusalem. And then a priest himself was the next passerby, but he didn't stop to help the wounded man. Finally, one of the hated people of Jesus' day, a Samaritan came by, took note of the wounded man, helped him, poured oil and wine on his wounds, took him to a hotel, paid for his keep, and promised when he came back he would pay any additional expenses. And Jesus said to the man, to the lawyer, who was neighbor to this man? The lawyer replied, the one who helped him. Jesus said, go and do thou likewise. Jesus wanted to include everyone in his plan of salvation. So he used what was considered a contemptible Samaritan as his hero. Jesus ended this question uh, that the lawyer asked with, uh, 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 the, he answered it by saying, go and do thou likewise. Jesus used this fiction, this drama of the story, 
this powerful instrument for teaching a wonderful truth about salvation and about evangelism. My wife and young daughters saw a theater production like Tom's uh, theater at a church in Toronto called The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which since has become a Disney movie based on the great books, novels by C.S. Lewis. Lewis wrote some of the best books on evangelism and outreach in the English language. But this drama, The Lion and the Witch in the Wardrobe, is one of the best ways Lewis had to teach the Christian faith. The best children's story I ever gave in church was a few Sundays before Easter Sunday, when I asked the young children in the church to come up to the front and to help me, one of them lying down and becoming Lazarus, to help me act out Lazarus being risen from the dead. One person lay down and another played the role of Jesus and called for the, raise the dead man to rise. Lazarus, come out. And others unwrapped the man from his uh, linen cloths uh, and the children acted out. And the children loved it, this drama that they acted out, and it impacted the whole congregation in a new and exciting way. Go to Tom Carson's website, seen at the bottom of your screen, and book him for a drama in your community. Get other churches to participate with you in this. What a wonderful thing that we Christians who believe the Bible can have terrific Christian entertainment that can also make a huge impact for the gospel in our community. Thanks be to God for all those artists and producers and actors who bring to us the living word. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for every book, every play, every movie, every actor, every producer and artist who does a work of art to help convey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to enjoy the work of excellence in others and support them, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Write to us today for your own copy of Dr. Larry Bryce's new book, Confident Faith in a World that Wants to Believe. This book demonstrates that you can find a confident faith in God from the study of the natural world that God has created, as well as reliable evidence for God revealed in the Bible and in Jesus Christ. This book will strengthen faith for every reader, and Dr. Bryce goes beyond just the academic proof by showing how he has proven this faith in his own personal experience. Everyone who has faced adversity will find Larry's testimony in this book a great encouragement. Readers are now raving how good a book this is for building faith and giving hope in God. Our new address is Reach Out Ministries, Post Office Box 11, Simcoe, Ontario, N3Y 3N0. We always appreciate every letter that we receive and want you to know how important your financial gifts are to keeping us on the air. Again, our new address is Reach Out Ministries, Post Office Box 11, Simcoe, Ontario, N3Y 3N0.